Hello everybody, this is Steve Darcy with Go Engineer, and today I'd like to uh, kind of cover a, uh, a sheet metal thing that kind of has been bugging me for quite some time. So uh, you're in modeling sketches and you're about to go into sheet metal and you do your little base flange and uh, let's make it five inch, it's looking pretty good. And we decide we want to use some of the straight out of the box functionality with the gauge tables. Gauge tables are just Excel spreadsheets. If you go to your tools, options, file locations, you can find out where these guys are. These are run straight out of the box. I'm going to pick on the K factor. And what it allows me to do is to pick different sizes. If I pick a, a 5 gauge, then it's a 2092 thick. If I change it to a 4, it changes the thickness. It's a little bit thicker. Uh, and it now it's a, a 4 gauge. So let me go ahead and do a K factor there. And I'm going to go ahead and leave it at a 5 gauge for right now. So I say, okay, everything looks good, pulls in. I've already got my material set. And now I go into the file properties and I say, okay, well, I want the material for this guy to be equal to, I have a drop down for a material. So that's easy, 3 16th stainless steel. Now I want to do a GA for the gauge. And then I hit the drop down and I don't see anything. I don't see anything for the gauge. Uh, there's nothing, there's the thickness here, I can get that, but I can't really get the gauge. So a little bit of an issue, but there is a way around it. And I will tell you that I didn't come up with this. I found it out on the forums. So props go to the guys out there on the forums that, that figured this guy out. So I'm just kind of reverbing this. Hopefully the video will make it a little bit easier to figure out. So the good thing is we have an equation. We have an equation editor. So we can go into the equation editor uh, I'll go ahead and just type, type in GA for gauge. All right, we'll just call it G. And I'm going to use a function. So here's the whole trick to this. I'm going to use an if then statement. And if the global variable thickness equals 0 0.2092, which is what it's set to now, which is a uh, five gauge. If it's equal to that, then I want I want this variable to be 5. If it's not equal to that, then it needs to be 4. And so if I hit the OK check, it looks good. It's going 5 inches. So I'm happy with that. Now, this only works if I have two sets in that gauge table. If I decide to customize that table and I want 10 gauges in there, then I'm going to have to do a nested if-then statement. And I'll show you that in just a bit. So I'm going to go ahead and say OK. Uh, let's go to our file properties and let's see if this works. I'm going to hit the little drop down and now I have a G and G is equal to 5. Now I can actually type in the back end of this thing. So if I put GA, it's 5 gauge. Let's go ahead and say OK. And let's test it. If I go to my sheet metal, go edit the feature, let's change this guy to 4. It's not 2092 anymore. So it's going to be false, which means it's going to get the other option on there. So I'm going to say OK. Notice that G equals 4 now, and if I go into my file properties, then it's now 4 gauge. And you can do other things too. If I want to copy this material, we can put a little space after here, paste that in. And so now it's 4 gauge, 316 stainless steel. So we can actually create the description quite readily uh, using this method. All right, so let's get a little bit deeper. Um, if I do have some nested equations, and this 0.2242 can also sometimes cause an issue, uh, especially if you don't have your units set to the right decimal places when we're reading that in uh, for the equations. So let's switch over to another part that I have open. And you'll see that I've got an equation in here. And I've done something a little bit different on this guy, is I've taken that thickness, gone ahead and times 10 by 1,000, and then taking the integer of that. So that leaves me with uh, a whole number with three, three units on it. And then I can just play with this three digit number. So as long as we have uh, a pretty good range of thicknesses and they're not too tightly uh, tight together, then this should work pretty good. So you can kind of see here, I've got uh, 209. If it's 209, then it's gonna equal five. Uh, if it's 224, it's gonna equal four. And if it doesn't reach, if it's none of those, then it's going to come out with a zero. And that's going to tell me I've got something wrong with my uh, gauge table or I've done something a little bit different. So we can take, uh, check this out as well. If I go to my file properties, you can see I've got my four gauge stainless steel 316. Looks pretty good. 
and uh, let's see if we can make it break. So let's go to Edit Feature. I'm going to tell it I'm not going to use a gauge table. And I'm just going to type in an amount, 0.1222. And we'll say OK. You can kind of see my gauge number has already gone to zero there. And if I go to my file properties, it says zero gauge, which of course makes no sense. I could also make that be XXX or something else like that. But hopefully you understand the process of how to do this. Once you're done with this, then of course save this guy out as a part template. So make sure it's your sheet metal part template and it's already looking for the gauge table. And so next time you hit the new button, you're gonna be ready to go with your sheet metal template. So hope this helped and have a great day. This is Steve Darcy with Go Engineer. Mm -hmm.